Um, just wanted to welcome everyone that's going to join us for our boot talk tonight. Um, first, some introductions. Um, if you, if we haven't met, my name is Peter Zappolo. Um, for about the last decade, I was the sports science and medicine director at U.S. Figure Skating. Um, I left U.S. Figure Skating last summer, and I'm doing my own thing now, working with individual athletes, coaches, and organizations. Um, and if you've been with me the last few weeks, we've done a series on understanding your blades, understanding your feet, and this week we're going to do understanding your boots. So we are absolutely thrilled to have a team from Jackson Ultima with us tonight. And just to, as a bit of a preface, um, obviously each boot brand has its own features and we are going to talk about some features that are unique to Jackson's, but we are going to talk more generally about uh, boot technology, manufacturing and fit in general. And then also we have with us physician uh, Ellen Geminiani, um, who is uh, the immediate past chair of US Figure Skating Sports Science and Medicine Committee. Um, she was one of the docs that was with us at the Olympics in 2018. And as was well Raj Masir was there as our boot tech. So we've got like a, a mini Olympic reunion going on tonight. So I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves. I just want to bring up uh, our slides for this evening. I know there's a little bit of a lag. All right, can you guys see that? Mark, you got slides there? Not yet. Not yet? Not quite yet. Let me know if still nothing, I'll do another share. Yeah, maybe it's try it again. Started I still have you frozen. But... All right, let me try this once more. Yes, no. Yeah, maybe. We got sharing started. I'll tell you when the image is up. And while we're waiting for this to come up, um, if for those that are here in the audience, please keep your questions coming to us. You can use the chat window or the Q&A window, um, and we will answer as many questions as we possibly can um, at the end of the presentation. We should have plenty of time for Q&A. Yes or no on slides? No, not yet. No slides? Okay. You know, this is only the 5,000th time I've done Zoom. I don't know why I'm having issues this week. <laughs> let's try it one more time. Otherwise, Kevin, I might get you to do it. Um, yep, no problem. I just want to go download it right now. Yep, no problem. Okay, here we go. Share screen. Anything? I got the little clock moving. Do we have anything? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Kevin, do you want to yeah. get a shot? Uh, yeah, let me see here. I stop. I stop my share. I don't know why I'm suddenly having issues, but uh... probably the internet. So many people are on Zoom. Otherwise, we could go ahead and work from our note. Try to get that to work. Okay, it says Kevin has started screen sharing. There we go. I see it. I don't know if you. There you go. Yay. Yeah, all right, so there's a couple slides that might be slipped. Yeah, but we can just yeah, talk can it out it. when we get there. So, all right. So, I think this is the one you just sent me. So, it should be okay. Yep. So, do you want to pop ahead to the in intro slide and you guys can introduce yourselves? So, Raj, why don't we start with you? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, you guys hear me? Yes. As I get started. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I'm Rat Nazir. I'm the vice president for Jackson Ultima Skate. And as Peter alluded, I was the uh, technician for the 2018 Olympics as well with Dr. Alice. All of us were uh, at the Olympics together at the same time. Um, I do a lot of the design and uh, manufacturing of the boots. I run the factory in uh, Cambridge, Ontario. Fantastic. In your, in your new home, right? You just moved. Mark? Just brand new home. Yep. Mark? I'm Mark Ladwig. I'm a pair skater. Um, I actually learned to start sharpening skates in 1999 from a guy named Neil Wood, who had done many Olympians, including uh, basically all the people that came out of Delaware in the, the, late, uh, the early 2000s. And it was my pleasure to do my own equipment and my partner's equipment up to my Olympic Games. And also I started doing many, many others. And uh, I was very fortunate once I retired and told, um, to join the Jackson family. And I've been their original skate tech and I've been very happy to be joined by Kevin Wu. Thanks for the intro, Mark. Uh, so I'm Kevin Weir, I cover the West Coast for Jackson. Uh, fortunate to work with a lot of amazing coaches, skate technicians, and athletes. And uh, come from a retail background, actually. So I spent eight years uh, working on skates and fitting skates uh, for consumers and skaters themselves. So kind of know both sides of it from a skate tech's uh, perspective. But uh, we appreciate you having us today, Peter. So we're looking forward to having some great conversation. Well, we're super excited to hear about Boots. And then last but not least, if we want to go to the next slide, Dr. Geminiani, can you tell us about yourself? Hi. Sure. My name is Ellen Geminiani. I'm a primary care sports physician with Boston Children's Hospital, Department of Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. I am a skater, former skater uh, a long time ago, um, and I've been uh, Team USA uh, medical uh, group for about 25 years traveling. I do a lot of work locally in Boston uh, with the Skating Club of Boston and other clubs, uh, taking care of skaters, trying to keep them on the ice. And of course, uh, boots are a big factor in a lot of the things we see. So we're, I'm uh, anxious to hear about what uh, the Jackson guys have to say um, of ways to improve. So thanks for having me. We're glad you could be here. Great. Glad you could be with us, uh, Dr. Allen. Uh, we're looking forward to, to get some feedback from you from the other side as well. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So moving right along, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a boot. Um, so what we wanted to talk about today uh, was different parts of the skate to, to bring the skate together and I think for everyone to have a better understanding of how a, ba how a boot is made, how a boot's made to fit with your foot and react with your foot, um, and then from a sports science standpoint, um, things that we can do to improve. So from an upper's perspective, an upper is the top part of the skate above the sole. And there's a couple of different materials that we've seen over the course of the uh, last few years and a lot of evolutions of change. Um, so microfiber, most commonly used in a lot of the manufacturers these days, it, it's just a lighter, it's a more consistent product, it's a synthetic material. So while it's man-made, we have better consistencies over it and there's better waterproofing to it. I think everyone knows water is kind of the end-all be-all enemy in skates, whether it be boots or blades. Uh, leather traditionally, and still used in a lot of skates these days, even in our own products, it uh, just tends to overall hold a better shape and form a little bit better, but it, it does have a little bit uh, heavier pull to the material. Uh, you can get some inconsistencies with it. Um, while it does have a more consistent, we'll call it a slower breakdown process, uh, it does take in that water too, so you start getting that heavier boot. So there's some pros and cons to all the materials. Um, I think there's some that work well for others and some that don't work. So we have skaters in leather boots, we have skaters in microfiber boots, both performing at the top end level. And, uh, from, from, uh, from the microfiber and the leather standpoint, it's mostly to get weight out of the skates as well, um, to add to what Kevin's saying, um, to add to get the weight out, the consistency is one, but the, the 
the main thing is to get weight out of it because leather is tend to be heavier. But also you have to remember leather and with synthetic these days, they improve so much. But leather is still leather. Remember our skin is also leather and, and it falls and it forms and conforms to a lot of different ways and shapes and, and works with that as well. But um, you know, with the man-made and composite materials these days, they improve quite a bit. And so we try to create a blend between the synthetics and the you know natural letters as well and come up with uh, with a, the best solution with lightweight and performance over time so and uh they were talking about uppers there just to be clear uppers are the white top part of the boot you know that you see um or the black part if you're a, a gentleman or a tan if you're a professional skater on the bottom we have the soles. Now this is the interaction where you attach the blade. And traditionally it's always been leather. Leather has always been heavier. And as we've been going through the process and we've been updating over the last probably, probably two good decades, there's been a lot of customization coming with adding cork composites with leather and also integrating things like carbon fiber. And recently you've been seeing a lot of boots coming with synthetics. Like if you've ever had a nylon shirt or a railing shirt. There's a lot of these synthetics that can give waterproof and lightweight and the consistency um, that even superior to leather. And, and another thing for me, environmentally, leather as they manufacture it is kind of getting to be almost passe with how much heavy metals and how it and how it how it can affect the environment around as they're making it. So really seeing a lot of positives in synthetic. And then it goes back to the same with the soul as well. When, when you look at the outsoles and we're going in, you know, away from the leather, because one of the main problems that you used to get with outsoles with that, that is made of leather, yes, you do have some shock absorbency as well, but we tried to do that with the compo composite materials to add layers of, of um, shock absorption on it. But the, the major problem that we used to get with leather, and everybody still do until this day, is the leather, it, uh, it absorbs the water in the bottom and the outsoles, and it also, um, it gets rot, it, it makes the, the blades not uh, hold properly. So the synthetic materials and the carbon fibers and, and stuff like that is actually way better for that from the, the water repellent standpoint. I think an important part too, when um, you guys talked about feet, uh, last week were the insoles. And I know uh, Patty's a great skate tech and talked a lot about um, orthotics, um, different insoles and orthotics, you know, positioning the foot internally in the boot um, will help reduce a lot of those injuries uh, all the way up, you know, not just the feet, I guess you would say all the way up, knees, hips, back, you know, it's such a crucial part um, and it's often overlooked. Um, so making sure you have proper insoles in there. There's a lot of insoles that are coming with skates these days uh, that have shock absorption in it. Um, whether it be, uh, there's no in foam out, no in foam out there, pour on foam that we use. Um, but positioning the foot is the most important part in that boot. So make sure you consult uh, a skate technician and partner with one that can really help you understand what's going on internally. I mean, one of the things that we talked about at length was really, you know, it's very difficult to build insoles or custom insoles for for skaters because they are very intolerant about you know the minimal amount of space that's in the boot and the minimal amount of space is somewhat desirable to the performance and fit but at the same time it's like now you want to modify it put something in there that's going to give some kind of arch or foot support and that can be very irritating to the athlete so i just wanted to see if anybody wanted to comment on that from the perspective of the boot maker you know what's the best way to go about getting an insole, in your guys' opinion, if, if you want something custom, what do you recommend? And uh, from if um, I, uh, I would um, take that one, uh, Peter, mm -hmm. this is Raj. The, from the insole standpoint, what we do is Jackson actually built in our last, the way we build it is actually to accommodate the footbed inside the skate. So the skates internally is actually built a little bit higher. So uh, the footbed that we add in there, whether it's you know three to four millimeters, two and a half to three, and depending on what it is, and if you need to add a little bit more, depending on the the, the foot. And what we find, and um, Dr. Ellen can probably add to this as well, is when you look at uh, many skaters, and overall, I worked with Mark for for many years. The top of the foot tends to be very thin, 
and so what we've done with the, with it and, and it also allow you to do to take that out and add extra footbeds or also um, uh, the um, special made insoles in there as well the orthotics yeah we are uh, so it, it is very uh, important work. sorry go ahead no, sorry. Um, we, we have a couple podiatrists in our group, and um, they've been able to, uh, for most brands of skate, use a very thin uh, but supportive uh, um, uh, orthotic uh, that can be uh, customized uh, for the individual skater, and even been able to get uh, those types of things into dance shoes uh, as well, which also have very limited space. Um, so it's doable, uh, especially if the mechanics of that individual's foot uh, are contributing to injury. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it is. It is. It is an important factor because, like I said, you know, you build everything around the boot and the upper, and yet, you know, you're not paying attention sometimes to where the foot is actually sitting and and landing and all these other things. So it is a, it is a very key element in that. So, great. Right. So we talked about the sole, we talked about the upper, we talked about the insole, but inside the boot still is the internal padding. And this is where you've seen another tremendous leap forward with a lot of use of heat moldable material like surline, uh, porons, we talked about um, just general foams as well. And I think the biggest advance has been microfiber liners as compared to what be uh, like a, an isotoner slip leather before. Um, adding a lot more uh, moisture wicking and antimicrobial, which you know in this day and age of viruses is very important to get that that moisture out of the skate so things aren't growing. So a lot of manufacturers also have a method, and Jackson, we have it as well, where you can uh, customize what you're using on the inside of your skate. So I think that's it for padding. Well, there is, there is also, when you look at the padding, and if you look what, what we've done, and, and it's not showing there on the picture, and didn't have a, a boot cut out, because uh, one of the things also as well, and, and Dr. L can add to this also, because in, in skates, you, you do a lot of uh, jumps, you, a lot of landing, and again, we look at the footbed, we look at landing on the footbed and everything else. But what happens when you actually land, and, and how many times do you land correct in practice? and how many times you land off balance or something like that where your ankles are actually jamming into the side of the skates. And that's one of the things in the ankle padding, the internal ankle pad, we actually have poron in there, which is a shock absorption as well. So if you look at you know, the composition of how we make the skates, you have porons in the side, you have poron in the bottom, so, and all those uh, materials are actually shock absorption. So even if your ankles just get hit hard into the side of the boot, there's stock absorption material in there. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Raj, because I find that um, many skaters will, you know, and I know you're going to talk about this, they'll have a very stiff boot, maybe too stiff for their needs, and uh, then they're relying on that, and the padding can only do so much to protect, and uh, then the tissue can't withstand the forces of repetitive landings, and that's a, a big factor. Uh, in the injury. Right. I do, I do think that you. the kind of universal advice has been if you have, if you do have a way to have shock absorption in the skate, especially in the, in the, um, in the sole of the skate, yes, use the shock, use the shock absorption if you can. Absolutely. Yes. That's, that, yep, that's the key. Cool. So I think uh, the next part is definitely uh, tongues in the skate and kind of wraps it all together. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of different tongues out there. Every boot manufacturer uh, will have different technologies that they're using within tongues, but tongues are a part of that perfect match too. So um, we'll go into the conversation that Dr. Ellen was talking about with, you know, finding the right stiffness level in a skate and finding the perfect match of boot um, for the skater's body. But the tongue is, is part of that too. So if you have a tongue that's too stiff, you're impeding that full reflection. And uh, too soft, you know, the same, but there are preferences to that. So it's kind of, you kind of got to walk that fine line and remember that, you know, um, ice dancers traditionally want a little bit more flexion in it and they'll have a little bit softer of a tongue, but same thing with a lower level skater or even a younger skater that's doing larger elements, you know, it's important not to, to over boot them or put them in something that's too stiff. And 
Um, I, I just wanted to highlight the, the one trend that we're starting to see, I think universally is that a little bit of a taller tongue to kind of support the, the tibia on the front of the shin there. Um, Dr. Allen, I don't know if you can speak to that, if you've seen any of that with the skaters and the. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, the flexion uh, with bending on the ice uh, puts tremendous pressure in the front of that uh, tibia, and that's where your ankle dorsiflexors run. And the lace bite that they get from that, from even just pushing off repetitively, landing, taking off, towing in, et cetera, it just creates that friction. So the more padding and continued... Um, uh, uh, a biomechanical pattern you can have for them, uh, the less stress that will be placed on any one spot there. And I think oh, so that was perfect. Yeah. what Kevin was talking about, I think is so important. It's not just the material and the design, but it's also the proper use. And we will get into that a little bit later in this talk. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing I would highlight is it is getting to the point where mo many of the boot manufacturers will offer almost a dizzying array of different materials and designs. So it's something if you're a parent or a, or a coach or an athlete to know to ask for that, you know, it's very possible that these boot manufacturers will be able to customize the material or the fit for you. So if you like something or you know you like something or you know you've had an issue um, in the tongue, you know, ask what's available in terms of material and fit because there's probably another solution. And that's something that was very helpful to me helping skaters and what, what Dr. Gemignani was talking about in terms of, of making sure that we can adjust the product to not injure the athlete if, if possible. That, that, is, that is actually an excellent point, um, yep. Peter, because uh, I think that's, that's very important to highlight is at, talk to the manufacturers, ask questions, because the thing is, as manufacturers, and that's, that's from my standpoint as well, we find out things, we research things, we go to many skaters, we go to many stores, we go to, and we talk to a lot of people, we talk to doctors, we talk to all these people, and then we find things that are common. However, the common things that we find and we try to take care of could only take care of, you know, between 75, 70 to 75% of the skaters. There mm -hmm. could, there's another 25, 30% of skaters that have special needs and would need different things other than what we offer. And part of the key is, and, and that's, you know, we have tech reps, we have sales reps that go around, is to actually educate people, to ask questions. If we have something that, that's on the shelf, that's not working for you, there are many other things that we can do for you, to your point there, Peter. So ask the questions of your boot manufacturers, not only from Jackson, there are other boot manufacturers that would do that as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the most helpful things that I did was actually going and touring the manufacturing and seeing, you know, what was available, what materials were available and how it was assembled because it gave me a lot of insight into what the possibilities were. So I agree, you just have to ask the questions and if you find something that you like, make sure that you're requesting it. Um, or if you're a coach um, or a medical provider and you see something that's a modification that's helpful to one athlete, then you know it could be possible for others. Excellent. Uh, I yes, think just to quite play quick. off of that real quick, the collaboration amongst everyone is, is the most important part, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as much information that can be shared. And then even the skaters asking the questions, the parents, the coaches asking the questions of the skate techs. And most people would think it doesn't go anywhere, but a, a lot of the skate techs rely that information up to us at, at factories and from a technical standpoint. So we do hear about it quite a bit. And as much as we can get, you know, we can, that, that's how we're going to make better product. And that's how we're going to keep kids on the ice longer. Well, and that's the thing we all have to remember at the end of the day, if, you know, the more we can, the more people we can keep on the ice, the more kids we can keep on the ice, the more skaters, we all win. It's better for everybody. So regardless of, of who you are, who the manufacturers are, who the coaches are, it, it's, it's, if we can grow the skating population, it's better for all of us. So we'll dive into um, how boots are made. Peter, give me one second. I got to yep. find the uh, video now. <laughs> well, I had everything queued up. I don't know why I'm having technical difficulties this evening. But, uh, this is uh, the dance break me. portion, right? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Seventh inning I stretch. Do, I do think. Well, I got to say. Go ahead, Sorry, man. go ahead, Peter. I was going to say, just going to a million competitions with Ellen and, and 
our PT teams that we ha always had with us and watching the meta, like what Kevin said about being collaborative is like watching our medical team, like bust out, you know, every pad material, you know, silicone, everything else that you guys always did to fix the skaters at the competitions and to do last minute boot adjustments and having people like, you know, skate techs available. I mean, I remember being at a major competition when one of the athletes like ex literally exploded his boot. And um, I think Raj did the fastest rebuild in the history of rebuilds and rebuilt this boot in like <laughs> four hours. Um, it, it wasn't pretty, but, but <laughs> we got them through the competition. Work. Yeah. But I think that we all do need to work together and any tricks and tips that we get from medical boots or, or, you know, the athlete's own trainer is going to be helpful because we're all learning collectively, you know, more techniques that we can use to fix not just the boot, but also the kid and, and get them back on the ice. So it's really helpful in that way. And it's usually a combination, I think. Are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. No, no, go for it. Go for it. Uh, no, I say it's usually a combination. I mean, I, some of it comes from the boot, but some of it comes from the, the foot and the ankle and the strength and the balance of strength and all the stuff we're going to talk about. But um, it's, it's very, it, it, there's many things that go into it. It's not one issue, right. usually. Excellent point. Yep. So let me get, um, let's share the screen here. We're going to take you on a quick tour kind of show you what goes into making a skate. If you haven't seen this yet, this is a beautiful factory that's actually just been moved. So apologies, Raj, but. That's <laughs> uh, my fault, sorry. <laughs> Move everything. <laughs> I just got my, uh, my audio. Yeah, when you do the share, you just have to hit share computer audio. So you might have to restart it. Uh, I can't find it. Where is it? It's in the bottom. So, the so there they're there. cutting the holes for the hooks. They're putting in the eyelets. We'll let Mark talk through it. The we'll let Mark narrate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm narrating. <laughs> and that's uh, the last. You can see the laser gets it all lined up. So the internal last, they're stitching the bottom to the inner inner sole that's below your insole, grinding it off flush for when they're going to attach the sole. There's the glue application. And then this is a down. What's in the technical term for that? The down pusher the pressure, pressure. The pressure. <laughs> and then those sole the sole <laughs> soul crusher. So that video uh, with and then the inside full, full audio does live. That video lives on YouTube. If anyone's curious, I'm taking a tour again um, about Mark's narration <laughs> and with some music because we couldn't figure that one out. Hey, but. that was a really. I mean, people pay for that, but. So Raj, Indeed. there actually was a question from the audience. They want to know if anybody can come tour the uh, factory. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> responded. To, I responded to that. If they, you know, set up, which we, I mean, if you open it, a lot of people would want to come in, and and we're actually open to that. But set it up with your retailer, give them a call, and they can set up an appointment with us, and we'll we'll be happy to do that. I mean, it's a uh, Raj Star <laughs> tours. <laughs> it's it's definitely worth it. I learned a tremendous amount just by going and seeing what they were able to do. So I would say if you can do it, do it. It's fantastic. Um, is everybody still seeing the slide for last? Uh, I am. We got the last of the video, so you yeah, have to reshare the. the video screen. Oh, okay, and uh, and share, reshare. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. Technical difficulties. Yeah, I wonder if Zoom's having issues tonight because usually we just zip right through, but it's been a challenge this evening. It says you're starting to share. There it goes. There we go. Hello. All right. Last but not least. <laughs> well, I'll have to talk about. So, so last, uh, what we're going to building the skate and what a last is, a lot of boot manufacturers and if you've been around even shoes, uh, the way the way a last functions is what the material pulls around. Um, so a last is essentially your foot um, inside the skate, right? It's the shape of a foot. So different manufacturers will have different lasts uh, and the fit will be different manufacturer to manufacturer. And Mark will talk a little bit about that on the next slide. Uh, but it's important to note, I think, you know, last can be customized for, for different shapes of feet too. You know, there's, there's rounder toes and narrower heels and wider footbeds and things like that. So, um 
the trend we're definitely seeing is a, uh, is a rounder, flatter foot that we've adapted last to fit a little bit better and boots to fit a little bit better around. I was going to say in the picture, Kevin, you can see a customization on that uh, aquamarine one in the back. Rise, that's a uh, inside bunion build out. It looks like, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bunion for the metatarsal bunion. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's one that was going to go in somebody's foot to be, you know, rapid custom. Yeah. So I mean, again, the 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 key is to ask questions of your retailer because a fit, you know, from the off the shelf might not be for you. Um, yeah, it could be, again, from a fit standpoint, could be for 50 to 60% because the percentage actually dropped quite a bit lower on that from the stuff that's on the shelf. And so talk to your, uh, your, your retailer, get fitted properly, and we can customize because, you know, and I'm speaking, let, uh, like Mark said and uh, Kevin says, uh, different boot manufacturers have different lasts. In, in uh, Jackson, for example, we have from AAA to E. And then, then you can have anything in between. So you can have your left foot one size, your right foot a different size. You can have like a, what we call an adapted width, which is the AWC, which is wider in the instep. You know, we have, and you can do any any number of things. So somebody could have a, a D ball with a triple A heel and, you know, all those kinds of things. So ask the question if you're slipping, if something's not right. And also we can do low profile and low profile is something the top of the foot because sometimes skaters have the, the top of the foot is, is very, um, although the foot could be like a double E in width, the top of it could probably be uh, uh, on the top of the toes, on the top of the instep, could basically be like an A. So what we call like that a is a thinner, low profile. A thinner foot. Yeah, a thinner, a thinner foot. Thinner foot. So you could, um, you could ask for those things as well. So your foot, <clears throat> and normally when somebody have a thinner foot, like Mark says, and if they're wearing a, a standard boot off the shelf and if it's not fitted properly, that's when you have the problem with the toe grabbing and everything else because they're trying to feel the top of the foot. So those, those are questions that can be asked and customized and get the right fit for you. Because the fit, in, especially as you get to the higher end skater, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. so that was kind a of perfect transition that. there for, yeah. yeah. There you go. Length uh, and width. No, no. Um, there we go. <laughs> yeah, got it. Per perfect transition to length and width. I mean, and across brands, this is something Peter and I were talking about yesterday, and you can see actually a Jackson sizing stick. Make sure when you're working with your technicians, you're getting sized on the size stick of the company that you're going to be getting your skates from because they are unique. Each Those last you saw, those are custom built on an equation formula, you know, that goes up throughout the length. So make sure that, you know, you're getting sized with the equipment from the manufacturer that you're working with. Uh, the one thing I will say that's universal across brands is, is uh, blade size when you flip it over. Not necessarily an eight in this company, an eight in this company will take the same um, blade size, but that a blade measured from toe of the front of the sole to the heel to the back of the sole, if it measures an eight and that measures an eight, it's an eight because the blade sizing is all uniform. So just double check uh, when you're getting the blades to put on your boots that they're measuring the sole. Um, and as Raj was saying earlier, you know, Bees can be, you know, formed and shaped. We're going to start talking about heat molding in a minute. But, you know, when you get start going from a B to a double A, it's possible, but it's a little harder to adjust. And that's when those rapid custom options are really good. And that's why you're going to be talking with your retailer. And uh, we'll go on. I, I think it's really uh, worth reiterating what Mark said. And, and that's why we were talking about is that, that, you know, I think it's you get used to skating in a certain size or, you know, I know that I'm such a size. But if you change brands that you you are remeasured um, by a technician that know that is experienced with the brand that you're going into because it is a different measurement. And also we're gonna talk about stiffness in a second, and the stiffness ratings are not equivalent brand to brand. So I think that's a really, really important point that everybody needs to remember. Yeah, I think Peter, that's that's really the reason we, we definitely advocate uh, you know, working with with an authorized skate tech uh, in the world of the internet, it's I know a lot of people go out and they, you can find everything on there. I mean, we publicize their stiffness ratings and everything else too, but um, these skate techs know so much uh, about the product themselves and brand to brand different as well. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure you're having that conversation and asking those questions. Yeah, Patty talked about that last week and she's like, please, please don't just order stuff blind over there <laughs> with somebody confident yeah. and fitted. <laughs> hundred percent. The thing is, um, so that's kind of... Uh, 
Sorry, Kev. The thing is what we try to do as well. And if you go to our website, you see we, we try to provide as much information as possible as well with what we call tech talk. And, pro, you know, we try to provide as much information as possible to, that people can actually go in, you know, be, being more educated when they're asking questions as well. So, you know, feel free to browse. We have lots of videos. So, so in purchasing a skate, you can go and look and do your research. And we try to put as much information there as possible. Because we're in a different age now where you can actually get a lot of information on the internet where you couldn't have in, you know, several years ago. Yeah, so um, it, it, great point. Um, everything that, you know, we talked about working with your skate tech with um, heat molding, a lot of, a lot, a lot of the brands are using some sort of heat shapeable, thermoformable heat molding. Um, however you want to call it, it's shaping that boot to your foot and customizing it to your foot. Uh, these boots are made for this. So a, a common question we get, whether it be on social media or just in general is, you know, if it fits, do I, do I get it molded? Do I want to do anything to it? Well, yeah, because you should. These, these boots are made to be molded. They're made to be shaped. And there might be little things that you don't recognize that come up until you actually start skating in it. it it's very hard to make the call when you're standing and walking because that motion is very different from when you're you know taking a stride on the ice or towing in for a jump so any of the boots you know that recommend that heat molding making make sure you're getting it done uh, make sure you're getting it done by an authorized skate tech and you're not baking skates at home like cookies uh seen it done works now and then uh <laughs> but probably nine out of ten times it doesn't work and it only takes and a couple I, minutes. You know, it's quick. It's only because the ovens start usually at 200, which is above the heat of that oven. And that's really why, just so I dial in everybody, your oven probably starts too hot. And so right away, you're already melting out the skate. Yeah. And the thing is, just it's important, like Kevin, like, Kevin said, uh, like Kevin said, to make sure you get your boot heat molded, regardless if you feel it, it's, it's pretty good. And when you put it on, it feels okay. It, it's highly recommended. To heat mold it as well because if you look at the at one of the previous slides where the last was showing a last is very generic it's built you know it's built uh, it's a generic last if you look at your actual foot shape it's a little bit different and everybody's foot is very different from what the last shape is and the last shape is made to make the boot look smooth make it look uniform and everything else but when you heat the boot that it actually shapes every form and every part of your boot because it gets soft and it molds to your foot and that's the key in heat molding. So it, it becomes customized for you um, as opposed to what it's made on a generic last. Our next part awesome. is stiffness ratings. And stiffness ratings was kind of invented a few years ago and it's to help you know the, the firmness of the boot. And this is where I'm gonna need Ellen to jump in in a little bit because I wanna see her opinion of this. But we've really developed that um, you know, just because you're at the end of the season, you're like, okay, well, I was in this level of stiffness at round numbers, let's use the 50, our, our debut. Um, just because I'm at the end of the season doesn't mean I have to go up. I mean, it's not like a high school graduation and going on up. And I give the example of a lo local skater. It's about 10 years old, um, 60 pounds, triple axle, and she's in a 50 rated stiffness. She's not in the 100. And to that, as you go through, look at this. And with Part of the reason, and Raj can back me up on that too, is the, the more expensive the boot, the more, more materials, the more touches of it is. I know other brands, they're stitching in circles and circles, and so there's more hands on it, and that's why there's the increased cost. So here, if you're looking to make that investment, two boots a year isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, you could be growing throughout the year. It could be safer for a sanitary aspect. So two boots a year is, is okay. I like to, and Kevin, and I think you coined that first, is... Uh, it's okay to repeat the second grade on the boot because you're going to get that progression. So, Ellen, I'd love to hear what you have to say about, um, you know, boots and before, stiffness um, levels. And, oh, and go to, ahead, Raj. Yeah, to, before uh, Dr. Ellen gets in there, um, there's a couple things that to reiterate with what Mark just says about getting the right stiffness uh, for your skate. Because um, what we've done is uh, we create that stiffness level to allow you to, because sometimes you get a skater that like Mark said could be, and, and we changed the rating system in our boot because one of the key problems that we have found is uh, previously or many years ago, we used to have 
okay, if you're doing a double axle, this is the boot we recommend. If you're doing a triple axle, this is that. If you do singles or whatever, and that's what our stiffest rating or that's how our boot was graded on the internet before. And as we learn and as we educate ourselves as well and get more feedback, we actually change the stiffness rating, we change the recommendations, we change everything on our site. If you go in there, you'll see the boot recommendations because your stiffness levels actually equate to, uh, to, to the, when you look at the person, the size, the weight, the height, and all those other things, it has to equate to that because somebody 60 pounds soaking wet can be doing triple axles. And then if you put them in a hundred stiffness rating, because that was what they think they should be in before, if you're actually just killing their, their skating, you're killing them on top of it because they can't break the boot in. They can't flex in the boot. So we change everything in that. And there's another part to what Mark said, and I want to add to that so people actually understand, because sometimes we look at um, as, as it comes up here, the most expensive is not always the best for you. Um, but sometimes the top level boot or most expensive boot, there are reasons why they're expensive as well. Not only the stiffness, it could, be ha it could have a better tongue, it could have better padding, it could have better footbed, it could have a collar, it could have a number of things internally in the boot. But as a boot manufacturer, if you like all those features and, and you're okay to pay that kind of money for that boot, we also offer that boot in, for example, a fifth stiffness rating. It does not have to be 100. So you have an option as well. So you have an alternative to say, okay, I like that tongue. I like those hooks. I like the hooks on the tongue. I like all these other features, but th this boot is way too stiff for me. So we can actually make the, the correct stiffness for you that, that, that you uh, require as well. So keep that in mind also. I'd like to see, Ellen, you, what you have been, been experiencing with yeah. those stiff boots, um, what kind of injuries you've been seeing too. I have seen, um, you know, with some of the harder materials and, you know, I would love to tell you that every skater has incredibly strong feet and ankles. Unfortunately, most of them don't. Um, and then you put a, a, a weak structure of, of soft tissue into a hard, you know, whatever uh, carbon fiber or leather or whatever it is. And then that uh, boot is going to be fighting against the soft tissue. And then the muscles are going to have to struggle to try to maintain position and change position. And they're just not prepared. And so I have seen a lot more of, you know, the lace fight and the uh, what we call adventitial bursts of the big uh, fluid filled sacks that a lot of the uh, single skaters get on the uh, on the inside of their ankles and those are not easy to manage and they're quite painful um, so I've seen a lot more of those I think since a lot of people are moving towards that really you know they figure okay well I'm doing triples I have to have a stiff stiff boot the stiffest boot I can get mm -hmm. um, and you no know, you need a strong foot and you need a boot that's going to help help you and that your foot isn't going to have to fight against is, is kind of how I see it. Yeah, and actually Peter uh, brought up a great point today as well, which um, I think is worth mentioning again, um, <clears throat> to look at the stiffness of the boot because, uh, as, and something that uh, Alan just mentioned as well. Part of it is when you make the boot too stiff, they become so stiff and as a small person, first of all, you, they can't pull the skates tight enough to, to come together to their foot. And I don't know if you can see that, but sometimes mm -hmm. you want the skate to actually come to your foot. And what happens by having a too stiff a skate, it actually sits around your foot like that. And so your foot actually tends to die, to, to kill the skate internally. And then when the skate break at a certain part, then it starts to break in. And then what happens, somebody look at it and it's a false indication to say, oh, my skate's a premature breakdown. It breaks down in a, in, a, in a weird spot. So I need a stiffer skate. It's actually not true. You probably need a softer skate because you actually need the skate to come closer to your foot. And, I, and that's a, an experience over the last few years that I you know, run into with some very, some very, very top Olympic and, and world top level skaters where they think they needed stiffer skates. And I said, kind of, no, you actually need a softer boot because it needs to come over to your foot. And uh, Peter and I, we were talking um, earlier as well. Uh, how was the, the old boots in the old days? You actually put it to sit on the table and the top just falls over. But they were quite high, so you lace it up and it actually, that's where the support was coming from. But it was actually coming around your foot and to what Dr. Ellen was just saying, 
your foot was actually stronger in those days because they were actually doing their job. Your ankles were actually doing the things that they, it was designed to do as part of your body. Well, I think that I think that's an excellent point. And the the other um, point that somebody brought up today was that even when you just go into a new boot in the same brand and style, the newer boot is probably going to be stiffer anyway. So if you do get to a point where you're you're you are broken down, or you're getting to a point where the interior interior materials are breaking down. It doesn't mean go into a stiffer boot. You, it might just mean it's time to replace the boots that you're in. Um, All right. Excellent. And yes. I think it is. I think it's yeah. worth reiterating that every manufacturer is different because I know some of the boots. Uh, I know for Jackson, you guys go from one to a hundred. I know for some of the other boots, like their stiffest boot might be rated a ninety. I have no idea why it's like that. I don't know why it's not a hundred or whatever it is. But that ninety is not equivalent to a Jackson 90 is not equivalent to a, you know, Resport. Now I think it's, it's, it can be confusing to the consumers. That's why you need to go to somebody that's experienced with the brand when you get fitted so that you're, you're able to ask the questions and get the correct answers. Absolutely. Yep. Well said. Very well said. Um, so this next guy kind of takes, uh, Raj brought it a lot of it together. It is how you're encapsulating uh, uh, weight, age, skill level, height, and, and all that into the equation of finding, you know, the, the match of skates. So a little bit specific to ours, but um, a fit guide that we've developed in kind of showing more that, you know, you have different skill level skaters or different skaters doing the similar skills, but, but they're different skaters or different bodies. You know, you have um, girls that are eight to 10 years old, doing double axles, you have 17 year olds and even adult skaters that are doing double axles. Those are completely different biomechanics, uh, you know, in the body that you have to work with. So um, while everyone will put out a recommendation, like Peter said, definitely consult with the skate tech and even your coach to make sure you're kind of putting all that into uh, your equation when you're finding new skates. Yeah, and also you um, might have you know, uh, we, somebody, we, uh, so you might have somebody two hundred pounds that's doing single axle as well, but so you don't want to put them in a in a flex boot. You want to put them in a, a stiffer right. boot also. Go ahead, Kev. Yeah, yeah. There's so, no, there's just different parts of that equation you want to take into account that you know we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves to in saying this boot will only do this. Um, you see a wide array of people, even up at the Olympic level, that are wearing different stiffness level boots, different boots made for different things. Um, so it's finding the one that's going to work right for you. Uh, and part of part of having that um, part of having that perfect match, uh, Dr. Allen can talk to th this a lot, I'm sure, uh, is that flexion in the skate. Um, when you have too stiff of a boot, uh, I usually demonstrate this in person, but uh, without bending your knees, it, it's very hard to jump up in the air high, right? You get a couple of inches off the ground. When you really get a good knee bend in and you just jump up, you know, work on that exercise with your athletes. I mean, it's, it's clear as day. You want that proper knee bend to be able to do those elements and work on those elements. So um, long-term injuries, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier. This is where it comes from, having too stiff of a boot and not being able to have that proper knee bend. Um, and that all comes to as well is it's important to strengthen, you know, your, your foot muscles, your ankle mobility, doing those stretches, working out in the gym. I mean, it's, it's not just the boot that has to do the work. The skater's got to do a, a little bit of work too, right? <laughs> right. And I, that's a part of it too. I mean, the, the skater, it's a lot of work, but one, one thing is to have the flex in the boot, but you also have to remember the dimensions of, of skating and the dimensions of figure skating is very different from any other sport in the world. And the things that the, these uh, athletes do in figure skating is very, very different. And, and, and I mean, I can attest to how top figure skaters actually are, I mean, compared to other athletes. The, um, and the flexibility come like, yeah, you can open the top of the boot to get your, you know, to get flex. Like if you don't lace the boot all the way up, you can get flex. But what happens when you're doing other elements? You still need the support. So that is where we're trying to create a blend of a fit at, at a performance level where the boot actually is wrapping and fitting properly around the foot, but still gives you the flexibility to allow you to bend, to take off, like Kevin says, to get down to those sit spins and all those other things you're doing. But 
allow you to do those squat jumps and land and also it, um, give you the support that you need when you do that as well. So it, 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 it's a very fine line when you're getting into stiffness and flexibility and the performance of the boot as well to, to hold up. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Ellen, I mean, I'd like to have your feedback. As well. I, yeah, I, I think everything you've said is is exactly right. Um, I, I think we have to, to, and we're gonna. There's a slide later, but you know, we talked about the strength, and I think we have to consider that the movement at the ankle and the foot, you know, translates up what we call the kinetic chain to the rest of the body. Right. So this all has to work together, you know. And the the ankle and the foot are the foundation. Um, but you can't ignore strength in the core and those issues as well. But we have to make sure that the foot and ankle can do as much of its normal motion as possible because there is a, a, a biomechanical sweet spot, if you will, where the foot can work and work efficiently. But if it's locked in too hard in a stiff boot, then you're not going to have the ability to maybe do some of the motion that's needed. Um, then the body does what I call the C word. It compensates and it tries to use something else to do the job. And then you just end up in this whirlpool of difficulty. So I think it's important for the flexibility, as Kevin mentioned, and, um, and strength and the balance of that. The body does not like to be out of balance. It doesn't like to, the ankles don't like, or any joint doesn't like to be locked up and not able to move. And so the more normal motion you can get out of that, uh, the better. And I, I love the concept of it being very form fitted because then the ankle and foot together can perform as a unit that, that it's designed to do. Um, and then that can be trained and uh, strengthened properly. So I think that's a, a, a tremendous uh, asset for them. So Kevin, on the next slide with uh, flex notch, I think this image capsulates what Ellen just said, and you can see where if you have that snug fit around the ankle and you have a snug proper fit at the foot, you'll get that, um, the use of both the boot and the tongue that allow that support as it bends forward, hits that sweet spot. I, as a skater, always found new boots helped my double axle too, because as I could get that flex forward, it would reflectively want to come back as a stiff boot. And it would give me that, I would call it a spring, but it's not officially a spring. But you know, as you press the boot forward, yeah. it wanted to come back to its native position. And that's where, you know, when Kevin and I were talking about it, if you're in a broken down boot and it's doing the, the hinge action forward just too easy, a new boot will feel much better. So I love this uh, kind of showing out all you guys just talked about. It's important to, to really know, though, that like this doesn't work if the fit's not right. You know, if there's a lot of things, there's there's a lot the of things compensation talked about. Yeah, the compensation, but the boot wrapping around and, you know, if, it, if your fit's not right, then that flex spot flex notch is in the wrong spot it's it's not bending with your foot um so to m really make sure that you're right. getting that proper fit that that allows everything to work together uh, that's actually an excellent point kevin and um to, to ensure that fit because sometimes if the boot is actually wrapping too much over the top of your foot it actually locks it in as well and it could because the boots are, are way too soft or they're too wide for you because that that is things uh, sometimes you know, if it's if you put your foot in and you could be a B foot and you put your foot in a C skate, yet the, yes, it will fit. But when you lace it over, it actually your the width of your lace is actually coming together because the boots are too wide, and that is also a major problem. So so it is so important. Like and everybody is on the same page of this is to get make sure that fit is right. Yeah, I find getting the heel to fit correctly is is a big factor as well especially for like you know uh, achilles issues and and that kind of stuff very often i i find skaters come in and, and that heel just isn't fit properly for them they're sliding uh up and down and then they have chronic tendonitis because everything's rubbing so uh, that's another factor to consider or a question to ask of your boot fitter to make sure that that heel fits properly Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yep. And I'm glad that we talked and so much about the mechanics at the ankle because I think what Kevin was talking about in terms of the knee bend is we all have to remember that, you know, biomechanically in skating technique, the first thing that needs to flex is really your ankles and not, not above that because it's going to go ankles, knees, hips in that order if you want the athlete to be able to skate over their feet as they take off. So 
um, you know, this, this is probably the most critical part of the, of the equation. So making sure that they can flex and control the flex appropriately is going to be extremely important to the technique of the, of the jump. Well said. Yeah, definitely. This is my slide, right? Yeah, this is your slide, <laughs> Ellen. Um, <laughs> we kind of talked a lot about the, uh, uh, about a lot of this already, but as I said before, um, skaters, uh, I would say, often have weak foot and ankle musculature and tightness, especially in that Achilles. And I think you have to keep in mind, coaches and parents out there, um, the adolescent growth spurt they are going to get tight, they're going to lose flexibility, they're going to lose strength when they grow. It's a good thing that they grow, but you have to manage it, okay? Um, and the best way to do that is to keep them involved in a regular off-ice program. Um, as we talked about before, it's difficult to, to mobilize, move your foot in the skate, and that's kind of the design, but it, if you can't utilize the muscles in their normal fashion, uh, and that's how you strengthen through the normal range of motion of, of a muscle. And remember that the muscles that pass around the ankle to stabilize your balance from falling over in, inside edge to outside edge, the muscles start in your calf. So those calf muscles have to be flexible. Those calf muscles have to be strong because they're gonna be responsible for uh, the balance about the ankle. So it's not just about that narrow focused area. and well, I told Peter earlier, one of the things I, I say to almost every kid that comes through my office, that doing your sport in and of itself, you can skate all you want, you can play as much soccer or basketball or football or whatever, playing your sport and doing your sports specific skills will not make you a well-trained athlete. I'm sorry, that's the unfortunate reality. Um, and it's true, we talk about ballet and dance as a means of training foot and ankle strength, but if, if ballet dancers and, and dancers don't train correctly, even in, in class at bar, if they're not doing the exercises correctly, they're not getting the strength either. So this is a very common theme that I see. And so if you can hook yourself up with a, a great off-ice uh, training program and do it, and do it regularly. Consider it as part of your training. It's part of your uh, being a skater. Um, and you have to be prepare yourself as an athlete. And the more of that that you can do, I can't promise you there'll be no injuries, but I think they'll be less uh, severe and hopefully you'll be more aware of how things are, are going. And the, the carrot on the end of that is it's gonna make you perform better. You're going to be better. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be able to jump better. You're going to be able to jump higher. Um, like Mark said, you get that spring, <laughs> but maybe from muscle strength and, and flexibility oh, for certain. and not, you know, relying on the boot. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many ways uh, and things that it can uh, be an advantage for. Um, and just keep in mind, the boots are not, they're there to help you. And, and guide your foot and ankle, but it's your body that has to do the work and your body that has to do the training. The, the boots are there to support and guide what you've prepared in, in your sport. I think you have to think of it that way. I think a lot of people, you when know, oh, just give me the strongest one, that's, uh, you know, that's what's gonna be best and that's not necessarily the case and we've mm -hmm. talked about that. No, and we, we did talk about- Absolutely. You know, we, We've been places where the athlete brings in five or six or seven or more pairs of boots and says, fix my boots. <laughs> boots have something wrong with it. And it's like, no, fix yourself. You know, let's evaluate the athlete. Um, I think yeah. <laughs> last week in the foot talk that we did, um, but, you know, address the, yeah. the fundamental movement mechanics um, of the athlete, as well as, like you said, your mob mobility, stability, symmetry. Um, you know, of the lower extremities and, and, and also use your equipment correctly. Yeah. But that, Peter, I mean, that's a real really life example of myself. myself. Right. <laughs> it, is to, um, is to make sure you know yourself, know your product, know what you're in. And if your boot life is, is five months or six months, you have to be prepared to say, okay, I'm six months, I have to be prepared for another skate or eight months or a year and depending and each individual is very different. So that is something is to, to know yourself, know your product and know the, how far you can push it. Because sometimes 
and 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 one of the things that Peter, you and I talked about this. We spent a lot of time together in um, in Korea, and we talked about kids, you know, pushing their skates to say, "Oh, after Worlds, I'm going to change my skates." Right. And <laughs> and what happened is you get they get to their their the, the highest level of competition with the worst possible equipment because right. their skates are oh I want to get that last skate out of it before I go before I get my new skates no that's the other way around when you're at the best competition of your life you should actually have your your equipment should be at its peak so so that is something and I know you guys uh, you know Peter when you were with um, USFSA there you were working really hard to ensure that. Um, you know, that this was actually happening, that they get their peak product at nationals. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I drew them crazy, but I was always looking <laughs> at the equipment two or three months out and saying, where is this going to be? And do you need, do you have another pair? Have you, have you even ordered another pair? You know, so. absolutely. And, and many times I got the emails from you have so, and so contacted you have their ordered their skates. Yet. And, and that is exactly, you have to keep that message going to the new generation coming up as well. So, you know, hopefully they, the people that um, take over from you will continue along that path as well to ask those questions and make sure. God that bless. That's all I have right. to say. <laughs> <laughs> as we go, before we go on, I just want to jump in too with Ellen and say, I a hundred percent believe that ballet in, in helped me over 10 years become an Olympian. And I'll never forget there's this um, Nathan Chen kid. He was this Peter in the wolf time, you know, he's really good at all the expressions. <laughs> right. And I remember him telling me that he couldn't stay for the bow at the evening with champions there because he had to go to a dance class, you know, and he talked about how much ballet and how much hip hop and you can see it in his, his moves today. And now he's the world champion, you know, yes, there's the component of the equipment, but like he has that foot, the calf, the knee, the ankle strength and the coordination of motion that he's done with that dance class. And I think that's, that's that perfect balance of the skater. It's not just one pillar of the, the athlete. Yeah. Right. I think it, it gets back to, I mean, good classical training, either in, you know, in, in dance, but also in skating, you know, you can, by working, you don't have to get on the ice and jump right away. It's the called figure. It's called figure. Oh, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> Explain to why the figures, you know, that isometric. We had that talk when we were at uh, Theater and Ice. The isometricness of a figure is how you were holding the edge in a perfect circle all the way around, mm -hmm. where it wasn't this fast, you know, pounding, okay, it's a fraction of a second. You were holding it for almost half a second, half a minute. Yeah. Yeah. We would spend, I mean, it was basically when you look back on it and we look at it from a biomechanics or training perspective, it was a minimum of an hour but by the time you get up to the senior level it's two or three hours a day of, of patch or figures i mean that's neuromuscular balance training mm -hmm. on skates and they don't do nearly enough anymore uh, and, and, to develop and soft that. old and boots they put the demand so soft old boot yeah your free your old free skates went to your patch skates <laughs> So it was, you had to learn to control, you had to learn to strengthen, but you weren't, you, you could do it because you were going very slowly as Mark pointed out and you were very controlled about it. It wasn't hammering on it. And I, I think coaches out there that have the, the went through it and have the memory and can teach the skill, I would encourage you even as a warm up, um, And especially as kids get back into skating now after pandemic uh, time off um, that they start with the basics again. Like I said, they call it figure skating, not figure jumping. That's the other thing I say to all my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, um, and so far everything that's, that uh, every skate brand still has lacing. So we're going to go on with the next slide here. Uh, proper lacing is key to getting that skate to secure to you. Now, different manufacturers, they have different methods. They might have a different, very prescribed way to do it. Always check with each manufacturer, see if they have a, a unique thing to them. But lacing generally is there to secure the foot. Um, I like to do this example. I'm, I'm trying to see if I get both hands in there. I find, and maybe if you put your foot up, are you one of those skaters that pulls out like this? I mean, you're just trying to cut through the whole of the, the lace more than anything. I always find that if you pull out to the side and lift up, you're helping take the opposite side of the boot and pull it toward the foot to get that wrap and security that, that Raj was talking about. And so that's one of the things. So don't be those crank out ones, be pull out, lift up, and you're gonna get a better security of the foot. And the next slide we have is gonna have two different lacing patterns. Um, Jackson uses these and, and we have different athletes 
giving us this feedback that they like these. On the left, you'll see the standard lacing pattern from where that flex notch is right there, halfway at the boot where the laces are. You see hook one, hook two, hook three, hook four. And so you start at the bottom crisscrossing going up. Now the one on the right, it's kind of a, this is one of the reverse patterns. Now there isn't for Jackson a specific way you have to do it. And this is where you can use that semi customization. And so you can start at the bottom again, one, two, and you'll notice it slips all the way to the top and then comes down to four. And what that one thing that does is it does lower the knot for you a little bit. So it gives you a deeper V of the lacing pattern, get a little, this is where I would say the dancers, how we were talking about the tongues. So now you're not having the, the, the knot as high up, it's kind of in a V position. So now you're getting a little bit of that tibia falling into that lace pattern. And I'm sure Raj will let me know if there's something I missed about it. You've got no, a that, video that, coming that, up that's next about, to show right, you. I mean, yeah, and part of it too, and it's not, this, is, this goes across to any boot manufacturer as well. And what it does, it, it, it's actually okay and it, it helps a lot to change the lacing patterns on your skates at times as well, to have the knot in different position over the course of time and what it, and it doesn't create a pressure point in one particular spot so you keep changing it and and it, that helps quite a bit and one of the things that we have and and again on, on our side is we have a, di a difference in uh, different types of tongues as well and we have a tongue and i, I think I've, I've shown peter that as well when i was developing it last year is it has some some notches on there and you actually lace through the notches because one of the things that i've noticed in skating is when, when the kids go down on their, uh, on their sit spins and everything else, the lace actually bunched up in the middle on the, in the hook area. And when they come back up, it actually stays there and that creates a lot of a pressure point and it creates a lot of mm. uh, a pressure on the tendons as well. So the thing that I uh, designed on the, on the, and this is what I learned over time, the thing that I learned is to, uh, when you lace it up in such a way and it keeps it apart, when you go down, it actually, brings it back up and it keeps the lace in the same position at all times. So that is, that is actually very new for us also. I think Ellen will, will agree is one of the most preventable and most annoying injuries that the kids give themselves is all the, the compartment syndrome and, and, and uh, uh, shin splint stuff that they give to themselves in the, in the anterior ankle from overlacing the boots. And it's like, I mean, I harp on them and harp on them and I know Ellen does too. So I almost feel like mm -hmm. it's your coach that you have to start at a very young age and really teach where the boot needs to be laced tightly and where it needs to be looser as you come up the ankle. So I don't know if you wanted to comment on that, Ellen. Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, we talked about it with related to the tongue. I think there's many factors, again, that go into that, the, uh, the tongue, the the shape of the tongue, the length, the padding on the tongue, um, but the way they lace them uh, for sure, uh, you know, too tight and, and then they're not gonna be able to bend and that's just gonna put more pressure and that, that soft tissue is gonna take the stress of, of trying to flex that ankle. Mm -hmm. And that, that is an important point about the lace pressure Absolutely. as well, um, Dr. Allen is, what, what I've noticed with mm -hmm. some of the, um, the, the tendency of some of the skaters they actually don't tie the top over the instep tight enough. So what they try to do is to get the support when they get to the hook here, they just crank it really tight. So right. It's important to lace. And, all and the then they learn that they the like that top feeling top. and they keep doing it. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bad habits early to get to stop them early. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And then it's not tight enough, so then they get the duct tape. So it's just. Yeah. <laughs> vicious cycle. It is a vicious cycle. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so we do have a video to kind of explain it all, but we're going to go through this whole technical difficulty thing I got to figure out. So let's do, where did I save it at? I think this one is it. Okay, let's try this way. We started sharing. <laughs> the clock is spinning. Here we go. Oh, look at that guy. Here we go. Yeah, look at you. Who's, who's that good looking guy there? You know? <laughs> chirp, chirp. Sorry. Are we seeing it now? See the video? Yep. yep. And I think we have audio, so let's see. 
While this boot is being laced up, you can see our unique wrap system covering the foot, holding it down and reducing movement. Make sure to pull outwards away from yourself. This ensures that the boot gets properly tightened. As we approach the eyelets, these are made to reinforce the flex notches and create a spot where the boot can bend, thus allowing the skater to flex properly. Make sure you're using it. The hooks help maintain the stability of the tongue and ensure that it does not twist or fall. While many skaters have their own rendition, here are two ways to utilize the hooks. Number one would be lacing over and under, going all the way up. Number two, lace over under the first hook, then skip up to the top hooks and work your way back down. This moves the knot further down the front of the skate. The knot is essentially your break, so with the knot further down, it allows you to flex more. Make sure to keep the laces spread out and not bunching. When your laces are too long, it's not good to wrap multiple times or to wrap around the back of the skate. Change your laces to the proper length and maintain the boot's proper function. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that was pretty concise. So that was really good. And I just think that when um, I think uh, just oh, when, say, when we talk about different brands, we need to make sure that you're working with your boot tech so that you're lacing it correctly for your brand and getting the right performance from your brand because there is there definitely are differences. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and then there. There was one um, note that I mentioned that, you know, it's a Raj said it, it's a good time to kind of experiment with that lacing pattern too. If you want to bring it further down on the, on the front with a knot or maybe just drop it on, they give it a try, but I tell new skaters when they're getting into their boots to give it a try. Um, worst cut on lace it and lace it back up. But uh, now you've experimented and you know what it feels like. Um, and it could actually improve your skating as well. Awesome. So I think the next part is equipment maintenance. Are we looking at equipment maintenance right now? Yep. So we're just going to quickly go through the equipment maintenance because I want to yes. get a couple of questions before we need to sign off. So we'll go through this really quickly. Uh, so it's pretty basic, I think, uh, but, but a lot of it gets left out um, that people don't think about. Um, do a visual inspection of your skates every day. Do I have screws missing? Um, are my blades still on a temporary mount six months in? S stuff like that. Is there rust on my blades? I mean, um, silly things that you see everywhere from the, from the beginner level to the top. Um, wiping those blades dry, making sure you have a microfiber rag uh, in your bag and you're wiping those blades off. You're storing them in soft guards uh, when, you, when you're just going from the rink to your house uh, and you're taking those off as well. You're taking your skates out of your bag physically. I, I harp on kids with this all the time. Take your skates out of your bag and let them air dry. Moisture stays trapped in your suitcases and you, your bags, your Zuka bags or whatnot. Take them out. And that added extra step would be to take those insoles out um, to really let the moisture come out. Again, moisture is the enemy that says on the bottom. And the two important points there for the long term is we talked about lacing. Your laces will roll up and, and, and they'll, they'll get crunched up. And what will happen is they'll get really thin. And now you're losing that spread of even pressure. So changing your laces regularly. Uh, get on a schedule, whether it be every two to three weeks, every four to six weeks, whatever works for you with your skating um, with your skating schedule. Uh, but for competitions too, you don't wanna go into a competition with a broken lace or have that very thin lace that breaks right before you get on for a six minute warm up, right? So the little things like that. And then down to even with the blades, cleaning your guards out, um, getting the gunk and the moisture residue and the minerals out of them that will actually transfer over to your blades. Well, one of the things that I find as well, that's excellent, Kev. Uh, one of the things that I find is sometimes the skate guards, when you put them on and you're walking off the ice to, to wherever to go, you know, in the, in, in the club area into the rooms and stuff like that, sometimes they're grits of sand or something that gets into the guard. So it's, it's important to wash your rubber guards as well to get that stuff out from it because it does affect the bottom edge of your blade. So it might create nicks and stuff like that. The second thing that I've been actually pushing a lot of um, skaters to do is to get a second pair of insoles as well, or footbeds as we call them. And what, what that allows you to have a, a dry pair of footbed every time you actually get on the ice, because sometimes 
the, the footbed or the skates is not dry properly. And before you get back on the ice, it's not even dry. So what you do, you just slip the one footbed out, you put a dry one in. So you always have a dry pair of, of sock liner inside the skates. And then once the other one is drying. So that I find uh, works well and it minimizes, you know, the bacteria build up in the skates and the, uh, the moisture from the sweat and everything else also. And, and it feels better on the foot as well when, when you put your foot on a dry foot bed. Great idea. Well, having, having two insoles like that takes planning. And so as we're coming out of this off ice mandatory period and, and we get into back to a regular situation and you know, you're gonna get through your season, you're gonna do a couple of competitions, you're gonna use this pair or maybe you're getting a new pair. Start thinking about what we're talking tonight, you know, start planning it out, talk to your coach, talk to your tech. Um, we had a conversation with uh, an elite coach and they designated anyone that's going to regionals and up, you, if you're spending that amount of funds, you are an elite skater and that insurance of having a backup pair, whether it's just the most recent pair that, yeah, you could slip them on in an emergency and, and do your jumps and spins and get through your program. Or, or if it's a new pair that's kind of semi broken in where it might have a little more um, support than your current pair, but at least, you know, it fits and it's ready to go and it's mounted and everything. So have that insurance for you. I mean, I, I know that Peter talked about it and I know that's something that we totally agree with. If you're an elite skater, you know, think about having some of the, that insurance and having that second pair, whether it's the old pair or the new pair. I always talk about four to six weeks left on that boot is when you should be getting your new pair and to warehouse that, that second pair as your backup so that you always have something that you're very comfortable with that you can go into on a moment's notice because we all know that for every, you know, there's a thousand things that can go wrong with your equipment, including losing them or, or you know, getting them, getting them stolen or getting them lost on a plane or God forbid, it's happened. So mm -hmm. <laughs> have that insurance pair because we know it's a pain in the butt to break in a new pair of boots and you're not going to be wanting to do it competition week or uh, borrowing somebody else or, or borrowing or lending somebody else's boot in the middle of a competition right mark so <laughs> oh i i don't know what you're talking about uh, <laughs> um, yeah. but it uh, happened. Well, honestly two hey 2005 four continents we were in not very far from where um 2018 happened and they they thought they were gonna get the the sochi games they didn't but like I think it was Johnny Weir, Evan Lysacek. I'm trying to remember the, the Paris team from Boston, um, Katie. All of them lost their skates. Amanda and I from Florida didn't. But, like, everyone had lost their skates and spent three days because it had to get to Seoul and then get across the country. And this is back in 05 and less cell phones. Less, I mean, it was a nightmare. They were just all yeah. sitting around looking at each other for three days so, at Four Continents. Mm -hmm. So I have had athletes go get – old pairs of boots out of, they put stuff into consignment and I've sent them to go get their stuff out of consignment. As you should. <laughs> Those boots when switch, when there's still some life left in them. And that's, I think that's enough said. I think we, I think we beat this horse to death. We beat that horse. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. All right, so in conclusion, I think that's our next slide. Yep. So just to kind of sum up what we talked about tonight, we really want you to find and work with a qualified boot professional to choose the appropriate equipment that's going to match your athlete's age, weight, and skill level. That's going to be really, really important um, so that stiffer isn't always better. Please discuss equipment changes with your coach. Um, you know, hopefully your coach is open to it, but you should not be making these decisions unilaterally either. Um, you know, and you can also have those discussions with your medical provider if you're having issues. Boot sizing and stiffness ratings are unique to each manufacturer and stiffer is not always better. And consider that newer boots, even in the same model, will be stiffer than old, older broken in boots. So I think that's a really great point that was made this evening. Um, Ellen couldn't have said it better. Train to be strong and mobile out of the boot so that you can maximize performance in the boot to injury, right? Amen. Big <laughs> one. <laughs> um, and then everything that we learned about using your equipment properly, the lacing, the drying, replacing it on a schedule or when needed so that you always have your equipment, as Raj said, at your most important competition, you should have your best equipment, not your worst equipment. And last but not least, keeping your backup pair or making sure your boots are in good shape for important competitions. So I think this is such good information. I want to see if there's any, if we've gotten any questions that we can answer. Um, if anybody has questions and wants to type them into the chat window, um, we would love to hear them. Um, here's contact information for all of us while we're any questions. Um, Please reach out to us. We're all here to help you 
Um, I know Raj, you'll see Raj, Mark, and Kevin all over the country at various competitions. Um, Dr. Geminiani is in, in Boston and sees skaters all the time um, and also is extremely generous with her time to our athletes, um, you know, helping. Yes, we really appreciate that, Dr. Allen. That's yes. uh, your time um, is so I'd valuable. Like and obviously you can follow us on social media. Um, there's my email and you can follow me on Instagram for upcoming Zoom uh, presentations. My next one is Monday. We're gonna do uh, May 2020 training schedules. So you can join us for that. But um, if you think of a question later, please get in touch with us. Um, I just wanna thank everybody that's taken the time um, to be here tonight. Thank you to Raj and Mark and Kevin and Ellen and, uh, we would love to have you again sometime. This is very informative, and I never know enough about boots. So thanks, everybody. But and yeah, Peter, thanks, also we want we want to say um, thank you very much as well because I think this was excellent that you actually to put the hard work to pull this together, and you've always been you know a very supportive of skating and and we really appreciate your hard work. And I worked with you closely for a long time now and, and really appreciate your hard work and efforts and great right. job. Yeah. That was excellent, excellent. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks for being Thanks guys. Stay Thank safe, guys. bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stay safe everybody, bye.